Okie dokie, artichokey. Well, here's the first big idea. You definitely want to learn this particular idea. It will be your sword and your shield from here until the day you pass from this earth. Spoiler alert, none of us get out of this. None of us get out of this alive. Isn't it beautiful? Now that we know that we're not gonna get out of this alive, we can truly live. They say, YOLO, you only die once. Not you only live once, you only die once. You live every day, so let's live together. And here's one of the best ways you can. I don't care what job you have. I don't care what situation you're in. I don't care whether you were around 10,000 years ago or whether you're around in the next 80 years. These ideas, red, orange, yellow, green, light blue, blue, <laughs> violet, all of these are actually describing the way human beings have interacted with each other and existed for as long as humans have been around. All of the technology, all of the cool ideas, all of the computers and PlayStations, all of the face chats and Insta books, all of those technologies that we have existed still only deal with these seven ideas. And the reason I'm very comfortably saying that this idea applies to everything is because um, People from over, I think, three dozen fields, over 36 fields, who are scientifically very, very good at their jobs, agree that this idea called Maslow's Hierarchy of Motivation, also known as Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs, um, to be one of the most accurate and useful tools for grouping your understanding of human behavior. Again, 36 fields that agree on nothing else happen to agree on the idea of Maslow's. This guy, um, and you know, it should be noted that he didn't come up with this idea himself. He got this basic idea from the, I believe, Six Sika Blackfoot tribe of uh, southwestern uh, Canada, uh, northeast, uh, northwestern um, United States. The Six Sika, uh, Six Sika Blackfoot people had this idea, except their triangle was upside down and nurturing a human being, helping somebody develop friends and acquiring friends, that was at the bottom. And, you know, so why did, why did Abraham Maslow, a European American, somebody from the dominant culture, um, why did he put feeding people at the base? Well, the Six Sika Blackfoot elders told him, well, our people don't have to be reminded to feed their children, yours do. Their basic needs needed to be at the bottom because your people have lost their way and have forgotten that those basic needs are universal for everyone. And he agreed and flipped it around and the base needs are at the bottom. So basically it's this idea. At the very, very core of who you are, you gotta get food, you gotta get water, you gotta have shelter and clothing, okay? Those are your physical or fancy pants alert physiological needs. Those are super, super, super important. Now you can have those other things going on above, but if you don't have those base needs taken care of, the, the ideas above become much harder. Okay. Think of it like the bass when you're listening to a, a, a tune you like, a song you like. Um, it's the bass line. It's at the bass. After you get your basic needs taken care of, you want to feel safe. Okay, and if you feel safe, you have self-protection mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, you have a sense of safety. If you have that going on and you have your physical needs, it makes it a lot easier to feel like you belong somewhere. You are affirmed, okay? Some of you guys are having a really hard time right now connecting with your fellow peers, either because of things happening in the physical classroom or maybe they're the disconnection from being in a virtual learning environment. You're not physically seeing your friends, smelling their funk, um, <laughs> playing around, hearing their voices through your own ears. Everything's coming through computer uh, speakers and a screen. And for a lot of people, that's really hard. 
But I can tell you right now, you are loved and you belong in this world. And I'm glad that we're together because guess what? We all do belong somewhere. And the fact that you're listening to this right now means you're part of me and part of my heart, even if I've never met you. (laughs) And uh, some of you I will have, some of you I will never get to meet, but I will still love and care about you. Um, You guys don't have the capacity to do that yet. You're too young, but eventually you'll come to understand it. Um, Once you have affirmation, safety, and physical needs, then you have your belief in self. Can you actually belong in a group and not love yourself? Ask any young sixth grade kid who's physically bigger than their peers, but is still in sixth grade, who's been adopted as a pet by their eighth grade peers. Okay. I remember seeing that when I was in middle school and it hasn't really changed. I could hate myself or feel bad about myself, but when I do nasty things, when those eighth graders tell me to do it, I feel good about myself, but I know it's wrong. So you can actually be in part of a group, do bad things, feel bad about yourself, think everybody else is doing exactly what you're doing, but really you're just kind of sad. Um, And that's where bullying ultimately comes from. And it's usually folks that are having some pretty tough times at home. And why are their parents having tough times? Well, it's complicated, but usually a bully is getting bullied at home too. And why is their mom, dad, aunt, uncle, their pet iguana, whoever raises them, why is that being who's taking care of them bullying them? Because they were bullied. And we can go back who knows how many generations. Understanding this is one of the ways we break free from it. Then you have acquiring friends, keeping friends, and nurturing growing. As you go up the scale, you have more hope. You have more capacity. You believe you can transform the world in some way. But what happens when you don't get that? When you don't have those needs met? Well, people your age have something called adverse childhood experiences, which results in post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, uh, or experiences that kind of don't go away, that are kind of PTSD, that's called, well, there's multiple names, chronic persistent toxic stress disorder, complex PTSD, uh, complex PTSD, or constant PTSD. Um, These are relatively new terms, um, and they still haven't become official, but they're useful to understand. If you don't get that stuff on the top, the rainbow stuff, all of a sudden you start to sink into a hole. If you don't get those taken care of, if somebody doesn't say, hey, are you okay? F you, mister. A lot of kids tell me to forget myself. Um, (laughs) And, oh, well, I can get in and I could say, forget you, forget you, forget you, forget you, forget you. What, what, What does that, what good does that do? If that kid tells me, forget you, and I say, hey, are you okay? I, I didn't do anything to offend you. What did I, what did I do? Well, uh, um, uh, try it sometime. You don't believe me? Try this. Your mom's screaming at you and you have to really, truly believe it. Otherwise it comes across as being a smart aleck to your mother, uh, or your father or your aunt or your uncle. Hey, I I can see you're really, really angry. Can you tell me what you're angry about? I'm angry because you didn't clean the dishes. Okay, okay, I can clean the dishes. I have a solution. I already cleaned the dishes. Okay, well, next time, let me clean the dishes so I can earn your trust back. Try it. It might just work. And if it doesn't work, and you've had trouble making any of it work before, then what did you lose? Nothing. Try it anyway. Okay? If you have these adverse childhood experiences, and everybody has a few of them, okay, let's be clear, nobody gets out of this without some kind of of post-traumatic stress disorder. It's when you have four or more, or when they happened really young, like it did to me, that um, you really start kind of towards a, a bad path, that if you don't have the ability to hope, and you don't have the ability to cope, you can turn to the dope. And I don't literally mean drugs. Dope can be anything that dulls your mind. It could be uh, too much shopping or too many uh, hours on the video games. It could be too many relationships. It could be too much exercise. Anything that takes you away from everyday life and what you need to do 
and makes it impossible for everyday life to happen, that's basically severe PTSD, and that's what leads to addiction, okay? I have a family with a history of addiction. My mom and dad broke it, and it allowed me to break it. But before that, everybody was addicted to something, okay? So if you don't get your adverse childhood experiences taken care of, if nobody checks in to make sure you're okay, then you start having problems thinking, feeling, or friend making. If you don't believe me, start a fight with your family this morning and then try to do class. <laughs> you can't, okay? Um, as I'm recording this, my mother-in-law has contracted COVID-19 and is sitting in a hospital in uh, Leon, Mexico. Okay, her sister's down the road 45 minutes in a, in a place, uh, I believe it is a Purisima, a hospital, and I'm worried sick about them. Why? They're not, it's actually not my aunt. It's not my mother. It's my mother-in-law and her sister. But my wife is absolutely traumatized by this because she's powerless. Her cousins are out there. Her brother and sister are going out. But my wife can't because she's medically unstable. She had a major surgeries uh, relatively short time ago, and she can't afford to get sick. And so I'm stressed out even as I'm talking about this. Okay, as I'm talking about the, the, the PTSD, I'm feeling PTSD. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and so th these problems with thinking and feeling and friend making, if I have nobody to talk to, if I don't create a video for my, my students, if I don't create um, music through my salsa band in my home studio, if I don't create or clean my room and it just becomes more uh, out of order, guess what? Now I have unhealthy behaviors that are causing health risks. Maybe there's too many papers and it's right next to the heater in the room I am working in. I don't know about you, but having a heater next to a bunch of paper, probably not a good idea. The toilet not being clean, probably not a good idea. If I can't think, feel, make friends, if I am disconnected from the world and myself, I start to well, have unhealthy behaviors and health risks. If that doesn't take in, get in care of, okay? If somebody doesn't come to me and say, yo, you are eating too much pizza and drinking too much Dr. Pepper. You're getting fat. Your sweatpants are too small now. Dude, sweatpants are supposed to be elastic. Now they're too tight. <laughs> Nobody says that to me. That leads to disease. That leads to disability. That leads to major social problems. Heart attack, ha diabetes, hypertension, stroke, cancer. The more obese you get, the more chances you have to get those things. So if I don't have my PTSD or my problems with thinking, feeling, and friend making, my unhealthy behaviors and health risks don't get taken care of, it can lead to disease. And if I don't take care of that, early death. I die before my time. That is why this is so important to use. Maslow's hierarchy of motivations is exactly how I can say, hey, you know, I appreciate that you're mad at me, teacher, for not bringing my pencil, but I'm dealing with some stuff at home right now. And if you need to know that, I, I, I'd love to have a conversation with you right now. Can I just get a pencil? It's, it's, I just need a pencil today. I know I'm irresponsible. I know, but I got some stuff going on that took some precedence. My safety needs at home aren't being taken care of. I'm willing to talk about it later. But that's embarrassing. Okay, so it's embarrassing. You were born between feces, poop, and urine, pee. Your mama gave you the love push however many years ago you were born. That's pretty embarrassing too. But it's we're all somebody that came out that way. Or we were taken out of our mamas through a knife. They cut her open like a fish. And that's really hard to hear, but it's all true. We were born in blood, feces, mucus, and urine. We all were brought into this world that way, kicking and screaming and yelling, okay? And that's embarrassing. So guess what? Every person you've ever met was born the same way and everybody else feels the same way you do in some way. Your pain is not your own, it is universal. 
And that's why it's important to know Maslow's hierarchy of motivation. Miss, I really don't feel like I have any friends at lunch. Oh, okay. Well, hmm. A good teacher will say, okay, well, are you in any clubs? Or are you in, an, in, in band or anything? What are your interests? And then that teacher learns what your interests are. That teacher, if they're asking that question, probably knows the interests of the other kids and can kind of whisper to the other kids, hey, you know, Johnny over there, he really likes, um, he really likes Naruto. Okay. Oh, dude, did you know that James has a TikTok? Oh, he does? What's his handle? Right? Those kind of things, teachers and people who love you and care about you can really help you gain those friendships and gain those connections. Okay? And that's what we all are looking for. We're looking for connection to self, connection to our family, connection to our friends, connection to our community. We want this. We desire it so bad. And in the modern world, we sit there in front of a screen like you are <laughs> right now. And you don't feel connected. You got to change the way you see it. This is connection. It's not at the same time. It's not live, but we're still connected and always will be. And that's how you start to believe in yourself when you realize you're connected, that you are part of a group, that you are relatively safe. And if your physiological needs aren't taken care of, let people know around you, let your teachers know, but it's embarrassing. Yes, it's embarrassing. But a full belly, it's not going to be as embarrassing. If you don't want to go into that hole and into an early death, I encourage you, talk to your teachers. Yeah, here it is in 2020. I've buried 14 of my students. I didn't physically bury them myself. <laughs> Weirdos. I have watched that many of my students die in 13 years of teaching. I'm not wanting that for any of you. So that's why you need to know Maslow's hierarchy. It also informs the thinking and the being of every single human being who has ever lived. And it's going to be the center of how we approach everything from here on out. Next thing you're going to do is an activity where you're going to think about these kind of things in your own life. Good luck.